okay. <laughs> Hello. It might have been a technical issue there. <laughs> I was waiting for something, but that means that it's the beginning of the show. It's by the numbers, League of Legends edition. And we're back again. So this time, there's obviously not that long to go in the LCS. There's only two weeks overall. When the, the penultimate week, Monty, probably the best thing about this week is to get to use words like penultimate. Have people yeah. who didn't really listen that much in school sort of squint and look like they think they know what the word penultimate <laughs> means. They know what the word ultimate means. But pens <laughs> maybe only like in the context that helps of, if you don't know what it means you know first off it's a prefix and second off uh you know they probably only know what ultimate means in the context of pressing r which some of them maybe never get to do if they're <laughs> cloud nine players as i'm reliably informed <laughs> so we wouldn't have any clue about it if anything so we'll start off as i usually like to with the european stuff oh no wait a second do you have do you have some rosters to brag about first? I, I do. I of course, things, I do. Right. So okay, let's start with that then. I do. Did you make a lot of money this week? Uh, it, I didn't before we start, how does this rate compared to previous weeks? Um, I didn't play as much this week, so not as good. But I I think I won every contest. Even some I'm not going to show here. But uh, this is a half full win, so a fifty fifty. Uh, basically. Europe is at the point where it's pretty predictable that any of the top three teams, obviously there have been some incidents, such as uh, H2K losing to Rock Cats last week. Uh, but for the most part, the top three teams pretty much just beat all the teams underneath them. And there's a pretty established hierarchy right now. And especially with Copenhagen Wolves going through all this roster drama, it was actually very predictable that uh, they would be beaten by Unicorns of Love, which is why I maxed out on Unicorns of Love players. Um, and then I, I took a couple of Fnatic players because even though they had a hard week against Origin and H2K, and these were the stats from the Origin match because it was uh, day one. And no, H2K match, sorry, it was day one. So I was very confident that they were going to win that uh, because they are just, I mean, they're probably going to go undefeated this season just given their current form compared to the other teams. And then finally, I just rounded out with uh, Mr. Rawls as, you know, seeing if I could push myself over the hump, as it were, see if I could get something extra. They were playing elements, so I thought there was a decent chance they could win, and Mr. Rawls would actually get some points. He actually did okay, even though they lost. But overall, this is how I kind of look at Europe right now. Just try and take, like, load up on whatever team is playing against Copenhagen Wolves. <laughs> In fact, I'm actually surprised I there was a, the salaries were low enough that I could take four players who were playing against Copenhagen Wolves. But I could, and it was great. And I won the monies. So we but go to the next one. Key, the key point to make here is that you obviously only did this because it was a half will win. Yes. Because here's the thing to note about that. Like, for example, since I don't play half wins that much, I actually ignored this roster whatsoever. Because actually, for me, this was like a bait. The fact that the Unicorns and Love ones were so low. Because it's so likely they were going to beat Copenhagen Wolves. But also, most of these players, as you can see by the points here, they won the game. And look at the points they're getting. Like, 22 points, 29 points. So it wouldn't have been worth the money if you were trying to get one. Especially not if you're trying to get, like, a triple up where you're trying to get in the top third or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this may not have gotten me in the top third of some of those contests. It might have, though. No, nah, it it's unlikely. Have. You haven't even got two point. You haven't even got two hundred points here. Most of the uh, ones I enter, you have to get about two hundred and eighty points at least. You know, to even have a sniff at getting the money. <laughs> that's the thing, Monty. I'm not even good at it, but I, I like go fast <laughs> and loose for the hardest, highest paydays imaginable. Like actually, if you, have you got another one to discuss? Or yeah, you've got a career. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Right? yeah. I've got I'll, a I'll, one I'll get one sorted while while you're doing that. So okay. Tell me about this right. Korean one. So this is another half a win. But see, this was great, Thorin, because you remember the time when you were tweeting last week about all your CJ contests and how all your yeah. teams were based around CJ. So this was the CJ KT day, which you thought CJ was going to win, but I was pretty sure that KT was going to win. Um, so this was actually... Ooh. Ooh. Uh, sorry. Um, winning money that that mundane and and boring team on it, it, it is it is this was day okay, one of Korea so it you was uh, KT versus CJ Samsung versus Spenu uh, SKT versus Anarchy and Jinair versus Najin so 
I did, I wanted to stay away from the Jenner Najin match because I actually didn't. I wasn't ultra confident about what was going to happen in that one. Um, but KT uh, someday and Arrow, who I didn't pick because it was too expensive here, do tend to put up extremely good points when KT wins, and it went to three games, so I had that kind of advantage going for me too. So that's why I picked heavily into KT. KT was also pretty cheap because it wasn't a sure thing that they would beat CJ. But I at least thought it was pretty likely that they'd go to three games. Um, and then as for my other picks, I picked a couple SKT players because that's just reliable points, even though Easy Hoon ended up playing. And because it was only a two-game series and SKT closes games very quickly and efficiently, they didn't get me that many points over two games. So maybe not worth the price right there. Um, but then the other players I picked were the Koo Tigers. So that went quite well for me. Koo, uh, Koo cleaned up, as it were. Oh, this is day two, actually. I'm sorry. So this was uh, the SKT picks were for Jin Air. Pardon me. So it was over Jin Air, but still something that I thought was likely to, to take a win. And then the Koo Tigers were versus Incredible Miracle, a game that I thought they were also obviously very likely to win. And Koo Tigers are putting up really good fantasy numbers recently, so I took a couple of their players as well. So this was another half a win, uh, but I did very well in this half, half a win, like very, very close to the top of the standings overall. Okay, hopefully I can actually send these files and I'll send a couple over. Because I have two I can show you. One, basically, the two differences between them, I mean, I'll, I'll wait for them to come up. There's, there's two to do here, so I'll just wait them from the screen. But basically, one of them is a triple up, which is basically almost exactly the same strategy as you have. One that's based around KT, but different players. That's the thing. But you'll see that it almost doesn't matter. You will get you can get similar amount of points on these particular days because of the get teams you bet on. And then the other one's a half full win, where it actually shows that you can win a half full win, even if you did base players around CJ, believe it or not. Like I had three CJ players and I won the half of, well, I didn't win it, but I got half of the money, obviously. So we'll see if these can be quickly transported to the screen. Okay, so this is the half full win. See, this is one of the teams that I made on CJ. And this is actually one that I entered in a bunch of contests, but I put in a half full win as well. You can see this is, this is just to show how effective the CJ players are. So they lost the series in three games, yet look at three of them here. So Coco actually has more points than some of the people on Monty's previously did, who were other players he had who were one winning teams. So that just shows you, I mean, obviously, in theory, most players aren't going to lose a best of three and have an 8-4-15 scoreline. Like, that is admittedly true, but the, this is just to show that the CJ players are very good value, especially if they're going to go three games like that. And for Also, especially, especially you're going to pick Coco, because even if Coco wins one game, he puts out a ton of points if he's, if he's winning. He puts out some of the most points in the league in Korea, actually. So, yeah, he won one game, so that's enough. And it also goes to show the value that a close best of three can bring to you in terms of point totals. Um, because even uh, if you look at Marin and even Easy Hoon had about 40 points, but you're getting over 60 with Coco even though he lost. And then the other one was the one that I did a triple up, which is basically similar to yours, but I went slightly differently. So this is the one that's on now. And this is basically where, you know, for one, you saw there, I went three CJ and one, and then I went three KT and that. And sadly, I only did a couple of the KT ones because I just put these in the, I just put these ones in the triple up because I thought to like hedge my bets. If I'm wrong, like here's the thing, for this particular week, I actually think there was almost a cheat that you could do, which is basically what I did on some of the triple ups, which is I got individual triple up ent contests. I entered one CJ based team, one KT based team, and essentially what I was doing there, Monty, was I was paying $2 to definitely win $3. Because first of all, <laughs> one of those teams has to win. And yeah. whichever one wins is very, very likely going to get me enough points to go. As long as, basically, Ku doesn't completely shit the bed, which is so unlikely. Because they're not only on the yeah. sick win streak, but they were playing like I am, right? Yes, yes. It was so very that was never going to happen. And then, if you notice on on my team uh, as like the last person to pad it out the last people. Oh, I just got to put SK telecom as my pad. So as my <laughs> pad, I'm putting the people who are going to get the lowest, but they're also guaranteed to win. So like I said, for that particular week, it was a rare case where I could pay $2 to definitely win three on a bunch of the, the triple hey, it's but like That's going like, to be rare. It's like, obviously. It's like you're learning how to play fantasy, fantasy league of legends, Thorin. 
I'm so impressed with you right now. That's exactly how you do it. <laughs> so anyway, that's the end of that segment. So let's, let's actually go into the, this coming week's particular schedule and kind of see which games are going to go what way. So one of the things, like in general, when we do this part, I'm trying to make it more like it's initially more of a form guide in general and then like a, a kind of what we expect, like the pacing of that particular game to be, what the net, what the kind of flavor of that game will be. And then we'll add in the fantasy aspect. Because the thing is, on Summoning Insight, we actually very rarely preview specific games coming up. We usually don't run through every single one anyway. So this will be different enough in that sense. So we'll start off with Europe. Europe day one. First game, Unicorns of Love SK. Now, here's the problem with this, Monty. Neither, both teams are burning right now, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> you thought Copenhagen Wolves was bad. Listen, I, let me make an announcement to everyone. If you thought Copenhagen Wolves was some easy money, get ready for your Copenhagen Wolves, Unicorns of Love SK body bag sessions. <laughs> like, they are the speed bags. This is a gym that people will be working out on in Europe. Your, your job is to choose which teams are capable of losing to them and how they'll perform against each other. So when Unicorns of Love have just lost their jungler, although he, did he say he was actually playing this week? So I know it said on Reddit that Gilius even added, but I'll have I think Gilius playing them. this week. Yeah. Okay. Right now, does Gilius playing make? I don't. I, I'm suspecting which way you're going to go on this one. Make up for the fact an entire team of people do not want to play and may essentially be press ganged in there, almost literally using the, the. That's that's actually the most accurate use of the word press ganged ever, probably in esports, Monty. Like Riot may literally just bring them on stage, bound in like Hannibal Lecter masks, and then unleash their hands only. You know, and have tasers on. Like, like who's actually going to win this one, Monty? Are you gonna Are you gonna go for Unicorns Love today? I haven't had any kind of confirmation on the SK news about like obviously I've read Richard Lewis's article, but I I don't know if SK is actually going to play. Even though yes, they are the the press gang attempt is pretty real right now from what I've read. Um, so with that with that in mind, by the way, how the fuck did it happen that in Europe, fully one third of the league is now just like in shambles? Because in Europe, when people know they can't win, Monty, what they do is they just go like, okay, this is kind of an unrealistic way to spend my life, you know, every day I'm working at this. So that, so instead, they, they actually start thinking of the future and they start thinking of what they can do. In America, even the teams who are down in like eighth place are like, well, mathematically, I haven't been eliminated. Like if I was to win every game and one specific opponent that hasn't lost every game was to lose every game. I could still win. This is America. I could accomplish anything. I could still make my mother proud and kick field goals and be the president of the United. I could be an it's astronaut on next Apollo mission to the moon. Like those were canceled a long time ago. I could be the next one. Like, like I think it's just a difference of mentality money. You might, well, we call it mentality. I'd call it delusion, but that's just, Hey, the American it's dream a is line, still right. It's a fine line. But that's not actually inaccurate about how people in America think. <laughs> so just talk to some of those players, man. They still think they're going to turn it around. And there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on over there. Also, regardless, you, know, you, want, is, you want an outside fan? Well, T, here's the other reason why people are keeping it together in NA. So in Europe, if you go there, crowd usually isn't that huge at the European LCS. And then in terms of fangirls, first of all, they've often had to travel from other countries specifically just for that. LCS day, you know, so they're probably only super hardcore fans. So they maybe only do really want a signature Monty. Whereas I've been to the NA LCS and the sort of collection of uh, female genes that surrounds that place, almost like a like poison ivy growing across a wall, if you don't carefully treat it, Monty. I suspect that that means there's a, a secondary impetus for people, even on lower level teams, to really get the most out of their time in the LCS before they slip back into the relegation. Like to still try and have p big performances so they can they can have a winning week, you know, w go one to one even, you know. If if, they can, if 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 someone can't land Bjergsen, you know, maybe a one to one performance is good enough, you know, like like a TDK type performance money. Maybe to beat a decent team and then to lose in good fashion to TSM. Maybe that that's enough to kind of show you, show a fighting spirit. There's my other. So yeah, I've really broken it down there. That's that's another reason why I think in NA there's a reason to keep fighting till the end. 
for love, Monty, for, for love. So, <laughs> if, if indeed either of us thought love was actually a concept, concept that exists. So here's the thing. On, the, on that particular matchup, you know, Cause of Love versus SK, one of the big problems there is, I would assume, just even, even thinking of the drama, well, without the drama, we probably would have picked Unicorns Love anyway. And then with the drama, Unicorns Love have had the least amount of the drama and theory affect most of <laughs> it. So again, you should pick Unicorns Love here. I'd say well, maybe, gonna- maybe SK, if SK keeps their entire roster, I mean, maybe SK, I don't know enough yet. So uh, that could be true. The problem here is, like, as I mentioned on the half full win that we showed from you earlier, if you're entering a contest where it's not a half full win, even if they win, Unicorns Love players didn't tend to get that many points anyway. SK players, some of them get good points, but first of all, because they, they barely ever win. And so I think that combination means almost no point in betting this one. Yeah, I, I'm and so unsure. You know, a love player if you want to, if it's not too much. Well, let's have a look. But especially when, you know what's great value this week? is you know, a lot of L- expensive as well. Yeah. You know what's great value though is elements versus Copenhagen Wolves. How Froggen is only sixty four hundred. <laughs> I could even go and ham on elements players. So okay, that's the next matchup: Copenhagen Wolves elements. Now here's the problem, Monty. On this particular one, there's no point saying that stuff ever again about any Copenhagen Wolves player be having good points because they don't win matches. Like that's yeah, it's over. And then when you, unfortunately, then on top of that, when someone essentially lets you in on the fact that. Some of the players are leaving and hate the team. Like, that's all I need to hear right there. I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> so, so whoever's against Copenhagen Wolves, we care about. There's no upset potential there. If there is, it's like no one could have known. So that's how fickle life is, it happens. Yeah, the problem with elements is that their players like don't produce that many points when they win. Tabs and Froggen are pretty good picks, but everybody else is very, very low. Uh, at the kind of rock bottom, like, last 10 players in the rankings in terms of points but then again Copenhagen teams Copenhagen Wolves is an easy team to get points against so so the fact that Froggen is so cheap is the main thing it's not that he's yes. going to get tons of points it's that he's incredibly cheap like for example you can literally be using Froggen here to pad your roster as like your fourth or fifth I mean, player maybe Tabs is the better choice and he's only 6400 um, on day one so, but Tabs is Tabs is definitely a super good pickup because it's just basically reliable points for cheap, and that allows you to maybe buy some players from teams like that will probably win like Fnatic or Origin. And then after that, we've got Rockat Fnatic. Now, here's the thing: in terms of just the game, yes, Fnatic's undefeated. I mean, last, if, essentially, here's the problem: even when they lost last week. If that doesn't make you a believer that they're probably going to go undefeated, I mean, I, first yeah. of all, I can't see any logical reason they won't go undefeated at this point after right. what they did last week, where it yeah, wasn't just the separate H2K games. And, in, and to do them day after day, you know, and to, and to not have to even drop one in that sense, it makes it hard to see how they'll lose. With that said, outside of H2, outside of Origin and H2K, I actually think that one of the teams that had the highest chance to beat them is Rocket. Just because if you look at what Rocket have done this season, yeah. Rocket have only won six games, right? But they have. But beaten they've upset H2K and Origin. <laughs> H2K, Origin, Gambit, and Unicorns Love, who are basically four teams all above them. So four of their wins come against teams that are above them and those second and third teams. So it doesn't seem that ludicrous that they could somehow do it, even though obviously it doesn't seem likely. Now, if you think they will do it, Nuke Duck's very cheap, and Nuke Duck is fourth in terms in the league in terms of points while winning. So he's actually really, really good value when he wins. Uh, so the, if you really believe that that has a possibility of happening, then maybe you should go for it. And Jankos is reasonably inexpensive. Van is reasonably inexpensive. So again, if, you, if just if you want pad players, I mean, for example, if you're doing a half full win, these one of these might not be ridiculous if you really don't have a lot and you obviously can't pick a team that's definitely going to win. This is a better a better gamble, I think, than some of the others. I mean, you you mostly just want Nuke Duck and Mr. Rallis if you're going to pick for this. So. Now we've got an interesting one, which is Gambit Origin. And if you look at the salaries, that tells us Gambit players are rock bottom. Now, just in terms of how the game should go, 
Is Gambit the sort of team that has upset potential over Origin? Sure. Uh, I think Origin has some weaknesses. If they if they get behind, they don't skirmish very. They keep skirmishing rather, and then they just keep losing harder and harder and harder, and they don't really play well from behind. So there's possibility that Gambit could create an upset here, but I think Origin. <laughs> You got to go with Origin, really, because Niels produces just a ridiculous number of fantasy points. Amazing produces the second most on his team, and quite a lot as well, especially for a jungler. So, I think you go with that with that one, Origin, and uh, don't think there's probably going to be an upset there. Uh, also, expect he's pretty cheap. Of- he's only eighty three hundred. Yeah. He's fourth actually. Niels is the expensive so- one, but. Even amazing is actually relatively cheap at third. Yeah, but that's also probably because looking at day one here. Okay, so I'll do the last roster one, but now I'll go. I'll go into that point there. So last one for the today is H two K Giants. Yeah, I don't know if I would actually commit to picking players off of these teams because there is an upset potential there. Obviously, with Giants because Pepinero is strong uh, this year in terms of his performance, and he could possibly upset them. Um, I mean, H2K won their previous game against Giants, but Giants also kind of put Fnatic to the limit the other uh, last week, or two weeks ago, rather. So, Because I think one of the problems, like what, because basically one of the things I have become good at noticing, Monty, is once I lose, I do actually sometimes go back and look at what the salaries were. And I've, it, I realize that sometimes you do get baited into stuff. So, for example, if you pick, say you try and pick greedily here. So the obvious, I mean, this will sound crazy, but if I actually had to pick what I think the biggest lock here is, I'd actually say Origin Gambit. Because even though I said, like, Fnatic in theory should win, at least there's some upset potential there. Whereas I don't really think you could really make much of a case that Gambit's going to be Origin. So since Origin players produce a lot of points, what the, the problem there is you're going to be baited into trying to get as many as you can. So you'll try and get three players, right? If you get three players, where are you going to get cheap enough players that have a chance to win to pay the roster? That's your only spot, basically, because if you go Unicorns yep. Love SK, you're not going to get many points even if they win. Get Like H2K, they can be upset and they don't get that many points. There's no way you're getting Fnatic players for that. You might get one, but even, even so... Yeah, so that's that's the problem. It's always sometimes just getting the points is hard enough. Assuming you go for full on tournament style, you're not just doing a half full win. In terms of team, do you think it matters whether you pick Fnatic Origin? Um, I don't think it'll matter too terribly. Do you ever much. pay that much attention to those? I just try and pick the team that I think is going to win. Basically, there's not that much of a difference because when you win a game of League of Legends, I mean. If you want to play risky, you want to pick the team that you think has to take like three Barons to win, but that probably means it's a closer game than you're comfortable with picking and you could lose. So I just tend to go for the more sure thing because you're not going to lose that many points, honestly, uh, off of that because Barons are only worth three points. And if a team wins, they're guaranteed to take down, what, at least eight turrets, basically. They have to take down, no, nine, nine turrets. So the difference is, are they going to take down nine turrets or are they going to take down 11 turrets? That's it. So, but you have to take down at least nine to win. I mean, the fact that a Baron's only worth that kind of tells you what the state of League of Legends is. Because obviously in, in like NALCS particularly, you, people get Barons and lose the game on routinely. So it's actually probably true. It's not even that indicative of the fact you won the game if you do or do not get the Baron. Right. It just means it does this game last 10 minutes more instead of yeah, you should and have when, won when I say nine. Nine turrets, I mean that in like 90% of games where teams win, they will take down nine turrets, which means all of the outers, all of the inners, and they have to take down one inhibitor in the nexus turret. Sure, you could win only taking down six turrets if you don't take down a lot of the outer turrets, you just charge down mid lane, but that really doesn't happen very often. So So on day two in Europe, first matchup, Origin SK. Now, I'm just going to go to the contest here because obviously the salaries are going to be significant here because there's no way Monty's going to say that SK is going to win this game. So really the question is how expensive is Origin relative to the other matches? So we'll see on that. Still front. less expensive than uh, the Fnatic players for a match that is probably going to be more one-sided. And also Origin players put up better fantasy points on average than Fnatic players do, especially, like I said, Niels and Amazing. 
So com in compared to Fnatic in those roles. What Fnatic has is uh, Febivin. Reckless and Febivin both do very well in terms of points too. So, but. I, in that sort of a game versus versus SK, is that a match that Origin themselves would close out quickly? Will there will there still be lots of action, lots of kills? I don't know enough about SK's problems yet to like say that. Origin usually has a lot of kills in their games. But there's an outside chance if things are really bad on a social level, maybe it's just even quicker than normal. Right. And maybe, like, maybe they, there's a forfeit because SK's players won't play. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's true, actually. I don't, I don't think we've ever actually seen a real forfeit, have we, in LCS? Uh, Has anyone ever just literally not no. played the game? I don't think it's ever happened. I don't happened, think so. I mean, I know Riot, have... tri Riot tried to, you know, force Gambit not to play some games because they didn't get visas for their players, but even Gambit found substitutes. Well, the irony is, Monty, some of the substitutes they've used to actually players who've been in LCS, like they used Lulex once, if you remember. Yeah. So, and, uh, and everyone was like, wow, he has a future in the LCS. And I was like, yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Maybe he's a <laughs> standard, yeah. But apparently <laughs> someone thought it was a, re a real team. Put him on a real team. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So going over well, to Rock Lulex versus is Giants. Lulex is going to win this week because it's H2K versus Copenhagen Wolves. So there's that. And okay. Hjarnan is top five in the league in terms of fantasy points while winning. So go for Hjarnan. No, I can, go for that's Hjarnan. a statement I can agree with, Moti, in its entirety. So, <laughs> so Giants also, versus Ryu, Rock Hat. Ryu is top 10 too. So Ryu's price this week is pretty, it's pretty high. But yeah, Giants versus Rock Hat. I don't know. Who would you put your money on to win the game? I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard. Because actually, I, I, I think in general, because I've tried it a bunch of times, I tried to make Giants into my sort of European dignitas when they kept winning. But actually, they have the, I think they're one of the hardest teams to predict when they win. To me, they also are just a spoiler team. Like, there's not even a logic as to as to when they're going to get the upset win. It's not like oh, they're good against this type of better opponent and they'll get that odd win there. It's like I don't, I, I can't even figure out when they're going to get these wins. Yeah, I am. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't pick from that. It's too it's too volatile personally. Although there there isn't like a very good match like the last one where you could just take a bunch of elements players like you could for super cheap. Um. I mean, with that said, Monty, here's the thing. Ooh, the Gambit. Actual, ah, you have to realize Giants has one win extra than Rocket, okay? Yet the salaries right. suggest that the Giants players are actually, in a, on a whole bunch of positions, like much more expensive. The reason behind that, Thorin, is that Adra and Pepinero are number one and number two in Europe in points while winning. So... With such high positions, you know if they win, they're going to put up just a million points. Like they average, Adra gets nearly 40 points. He gets 39 points and change when winning. And Pepe Nero puts up nearly 38. So these guys are really high value. That's also, though, why I would definitely just stay away from this one. It's hard to call anyway. Like it's, it's so close to a 50-50. And... If you want to get the Giants players, it's going to be so expensive. So you get, you're basically committing to that's like the base of your roster, probably. Right. Which I mean, it has one a of these players if they win, but it's very uh, it's it's questionable whether they will win. But I mean, put it this way: Pepinero costs more than Xpeke, so yeah, that's hard to and justify. Yes, considering well, he does get uh, Xpeke does get about seven fewer points on average. But yes, he's playing SK. SK. <laughs> you know, he's playing, uh, yes, SK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So average doesn't matter in this particular sense, Monty. He will be getting those points. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so unicorns will love Gambit. Now here's one so where this Gambit should have, have been really a value. This should have been a really close game. And it's like, again, what, what are we going to do here? But the fact that in theory, one of the catalysts of unicorns love stars, the guy who will be missing, that alone has to tip it to Gambit, right? Right, you'd think that that was going to be the case. And if you want to take Gambit players, you want to take Cabochard and Forgiven. Cabochard actually does put up some pretty good numbers for a top player, and he's only 6,700 this week in terms of salary. He's actually less than Vizichachi, 
but he's actually likely to win that game because there's going to be a new jungler on Unicorns of Love, and Gambit has slowly been getting their shit together. And the, both here's the thing: both Kabashad and Forgiven are among the cheapest players at their role. So yes. you don't even have to make these a primary factor, and yet you're very likely to get a win. Yes, and some Look, decent points, especially out of Kabashad. Although the problem is, I can already tell you, just because of how many teams have had problems, there's going to be at least one of these teams with problems somehow gets a win anyway, just knowing that it's best of one format and that will ruin it for everyone. But it's nothing we can all do about that. We should have to accept the cruel, spiteful glances that life hands us sometimes and soldier on regardless. So H2K play Copenhagen Wolves, which obviously should be a sure thing. Yep. In terms of actual salary, just looking at today's, what's actually reasonable on H2K here? Because the problem uh, is... Hjarnan, Hjarnan and Ryu are very high value picks. Yeah, you say that. Okay, Hjarnan, I'll take that. Like, actually, Kass- he is... Kassink too is very good for a support player. Here's the key thing, Monty. Hjarnan is 500 less than Niels, and he is 1,200 less than Reckless. That's very good when he considers he's going to win. Problem is... Ryu is 100 less than, uh, let me see, he's 900 less than Febivan, and he's more expensive than everyone else. So Ryu is more expensive than Xpeke also. So you have to does a up, massive amount Ryu of things does, for you. If you, can, if you can shoehorn him in there, I don't think that he, I mean, he's only 300 more than Xpeke, but he... You can't shoehorn up, anyone that's 8700, mate. <laughs> I've tried stuff like that. It doesn't work. <laughs> can only have a couple of those players. I mean, it's it's definitely worth it. He, like, Ryu does put up points when he wins. That's it. That's how it goes for H2K. And so the last game is Elements Fnatic. And as expected, in this time, literally every single Fnatic player is the most expensive at their role. Yeah. Like, for example, Yellow Star is 9,100, and he's a fucking support player. Like, the second most expensive support is 7 By the way, he just... Kasing also puts up better points when winning than Yellow Star does. He has a higher average points while winning, so he's better value. If if both Fnatic and uh, H2K are going to win, it's statistically smarter to, to pick up Kasing. But that's the problem, Monty, is that since Fnatic always win, first of all, you're not ever, if you always win, going to have as high a percentage. Like, for example, that's why people at like SK can sometimes have good stats, is because they never win, so they do it once, and that can be the stats. Secondly, you were guaranteed to get those points if you bet on Fnatic. So as a fantasy service, you have to make those players really expensive for obvious reasons so that every roster isn't just Fnatic and then two lucky guesses that wins a whole contest and ruins it for everyone, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely possible. Is Elements a team that has any chance of beating Fnatic? I don't think so. (laughs) I really don't. I mean, in theory, you would think a team that beats Fnatic would have to get the early jump on them. So, well, but even teams that get the early jump have not been able to close. Look at Giants and Origin in the last couple of weeks. I mean, let's actually see. The other problem is that the actual elements players. Uh, I mean, I guess actually they are they are cheap. The thing is, they're not even that cheap. Like, what's sick is. It's actually more for like Dexter than Diamond Prox, which admittedly, yeah, points wise makes sense, but I can't see any way you could justify getting someone like certain positions. Yeah, like, how could you ever justify putting Froggen in this particular team when you consider some of the people that are above him? <laughs> Even as a gamble, you'd go like Nuke Duck instead, right? Yeah, probably. So, what would the point be? Definitely, because. Because Froggen just isn't anywhere near as good for fantasy as Nuketuck is. So, okay, let's go over to NA now. So, over in NA, we've got... First match is C9 versus NME. Now, the big problem from the past weeks we've discussed is that NME originally was one of those teams where it's like, if they do win, they get all these points. That seems to have changed drastically, yep. though, right? Well, Inox and Trashy... And Otter are still kind of in the top 10 players for points, but I don't think enemy's going to win here. I think C9 is actually capable of taking it. So, Is it that? I mean, that's 
what, why are you so adamant that they will win then? I'm not adamant. I just think they're likely to win. Okay. I mean, C9 beat Dignitas last week. They've shown that they can still, since High's back in now, that they can actually compete. Now, of course, two weeks ago they lost to Team 8, but they've had more and more time to scrim with High. So it's a, it, I think it's a close series. My issue is that the C9 players are all kind of expensive compared to how likely they are to win. I mean, Sneaky is not bad in as much as these sort of middle ground for an AD carry, 7,800. That's not ridiculously expensive. Yeah, Sneaky also has been not awesome. At, at, I mean, he's, he's still top 10, actually, in terms of fantasy points. He's the best player on C9, so that could be some good value, actually. So if you just want to have like a fourth, third, fourth guy where you have to, they can't be super cheap, that, that's not terrible. Yeah, that's not but the it, with NME, they do otter trashy and uh, or otter inox and trashy in that order do actually put up quite a few fantasy points when they win. So there could be a lot of value there actually, considering how cheap all those guys are this week. So okay, next game is Gravity Dignitas. Now, have you like have you peeled back off Dignitas entirely in as much as they're facing the league leader here? I have, and also Gravity is just garbage for fantasy points they're just terrible so even if you think gravity's gonna win you you probably shouldn't actually pick them up honestly why why do you think that is then if they're winning all these games why are they not producing because they never points? have any kills they they don't get kills really they just how do they win the game then move around the map and take objectives i mean look at the how do you not love this team you, i don't even get this mate you just described <laughs> like like that's it that's how you win in the LCS. Never was like, no, no, you're supposed to get kills and like beat your laning apart. He's like, no, no, you don't. You just move around and get the objectives. You should because, love gravity. Because everyone else is just rolling over and dying in the face of gravity as opposed to actually contesting them, Thorin. Even better. They, they all no bow the knee. Yeah, they're they just all like, they really they're just, do. They're just like, these pussies won't even fight us. This is bullshit, man. What is this? What? The they're just like they're like MMA fans that only want to see people get knocked out. And they're like, "What is jujitsu? This is bullshit. Stand them up. This is unfair." <laughs> so okay, after see, that, see gravity. All their players, even though they have the best record, all of their players are in the lower half, in the bottom fifty percent of fantasy point people. Like Hanser is the best player to get on gravity, followed by Alltech in terms of points. But if we look right here, the jungler move, he is. He is the sixth worst player in the league in terms of getting fantasy points when Gravity wins. And yet he is 8,200 salary. That is such terrible value. Bunny Fufu is the fourth worst player in the league for points while winning. And he has an 8,200 salary. So sure, I think Gravity is likely to win. But even if you pick these guys and they win, there's, there's very low value there. Dignitas is a team that has still won eight games this season. So what what actual kind of odds as an outsider do they have of winning the game? How yeah, bad can, are they? I think, they? I think they can, they can beat Gravity possibly, but I'd only give them like a 25% chance to do so. And it, I suppose that's the other aspect of this is that the Dignitas players are incredibly Very cheap. cheap. Core is the cheapest AD carry, and he actually puts up, more points of winning than anybody on gravity whatsoever by a significant amount. So that's a, it's an interesting prospect, but I just don't think Dick's going to win. So then we've got tip versus TSM, which has now suddenly become a matchup of two teams who have the same ranking in the league. Cause if you remember, basically they went in opposite directions. TSM was top of the league, t second place in the league. And then Tip was actually at one point hovering right down the middle of the pack near like a 50% win rate, you know. So does... And also also Tip is on a hot streak right now. They've gone 4-0 and in the past two weeks. So, so what should the complexion doing? of this sort of a game be? I think that with TSM's current form, Impulse can definitely beat them. That's, that's certainly a possibility. They could just... And the thing that Impulse does is they just kind of overpower you with, with individual skill from Rush, Xiao Wei Zhao, and Impact. And, you know, Xiao Wei Zhao has in the past shown that he can hang in there with Bjergsen. He's been there doing it for a long time now. Um, 
But as for impact and rush, I think they over they outclass the jungle and top laners on TSM. So it's a chance they could do very well. And surprisingly, Apollo is actually the best fantasy player for points on tip because he just plays janitor for the most part for the team and just rakes in the kills. So I think Impulse actually has some decent value here. Obviously, Apollo is still quite expensive. So is Rush. So is Impact. Um, Bjergsen and Zhao Zhao are the same. So you're not going to be able to get too many of these players regardless. In terms of Shawa Shao, though, his actual points have improved a lot. Like at this point, here's the best way to describe it. Among the mid laners that get a lot of points who actually win games, he's like fourth. It's true. Like Bjergsen, Phoenix, and Pobalt Roll get more than him. But let's be fair. The only other people with the good ones is people like Inox and Golden yeah. Blue. And the whole point is they don't yeah. win the games. They don't, they're not actually going to... Incarnation. These got these guys aren't actually going to win the game. That's the whole point. So he's right. actually not that terrible. Now, admittedly, he's not great value. So essentially, you're only picking him if you think TSM right. loses. Definitely. Also, also, if you want an impulse player, you want Apollo and Rush, both of whom are ahead of Xiao Wei Zhao in terms of points while winning. So there's that too. Rush actually has pretty great stats for a jungler. He's only behind Trashy, and Trashy doesn't win games. So. So CLG versus Liquid, another one that, in theory, should have been like a, a marquee game. There's only the teams are one game apart, but I believe uh, you have a reason as to why you think CLG will lose. They're two and five against teams that have the same. They they have the same uh, standing because they're tied for third right now with Impulse and TSM. So, of the top five teams, TSM is two and five against them. Which means but that they're seven, and, they're seven and zero oh against Dignitas, Teammate, C Nine, Enemy, and TDK. So but let's I, be reasonable. When you look at the salaries, CLG have some very cheap players. So if you want to do like a triple up or something, you want to gamble. Building a CLG team is probably not the worst, especially since Double Lift puts up crazy points. He puts up forty one points on average when he wins. So that's second in the league behind Nien, and Nien doesn't win games on teammate. So, although he might this week one. because of TDK. So Zion Spartan is actually the second highest in terms of points for a top laner when he wins. He gets 33, which is still pretty decent, and he's actually like 6,600. He's the second cheapest in the whole league. Yep. So it's not, it's not a terrible pickup. And Definitely also... Not. Let's see. Although, admittedly, Team Liquid did beat CLG the last time they played. That wasn't one of the one of the teams they got there. One of the wins are the top ones. So, no, there is that. No, it was not. It's it's not great. It's not great. What about what is Double F's points in a loss? Though Double F's points even in a loss is thirty. So actually, if you're doing like a, a half a win, that might still not be, be that might not be a terrible pickup. Can you get a chance he can win, and even if he loses, he might get you some decent points anyway. So now we have TDK teammate. This is actually the first play day is really even across the board here. All yeah. these games are like no one's like a sure thing. So actually, this first play day, I assume Monty would actually just tell you to skip this one in general. Why not just focus <laughs> your efforts on a different day? But yeah. obviously, we're going to take it as if you had to. But yeah, the problem with this day is the reason it's going to be hard to build a team is even if you guess correctly, like one or two of these results, there's no sure thing around which to build your team and then to put the other ones in from the one that you think, well, that's the problem. That's why, how I always tried to build the roster initially is you got to have the sure thing where you take the, the guaranteed points and then you make the smart decisions on the other ones, you know? Right. Like you notice on Monty's winning ones, he almost never has a lineup where it's like he's betting on four different teams to win. That's not happening. It's nearly always three teams just because it's so difficult. You can only get so many players anyway. And expenses-wise, you're not going to get that many sure things. It's usually three teams. And you want one to be a lock, one to be like reasonably good chance, and then the other one to be someone usually who's like a lock but a, a, a crap lock where they're not, they're not going to get tons of points, but as a result, the salary is cheap enough. That's t that tends to be the formula I've noticed. Yeah, fair enough. So who should actually beat? Who should win out of teammate and TDK? 
I I don't know. Uh, obviously, TDK has won one game this season. Right, but and they've only won one game since their new roster came in, so our stats are really skewed. I mean, I'm, Emperor is fifth in the league for points, but he's only won that one game. So it's super hard to say if that's actually a, a reliable number or not. I honestly I mean, have Tonso no idea. has a ridiculously high number if he wins. Yes, yes, exactly. He's number one. So you could get some very good value here, but I think it's such a coin flip to say who wins this game. Thing is, for 8,000, here's the problem. I would have said for 8,000 on, on another day, maybe he would be like a good, the good flex one to put in there for another carry to get a lot of points. The problem here is that so many other people are close to him in salary. That's the thing. So like Apollo is 200 more. Piglet is 300 more. So you have to really be certain he's going to win to get all those points. It's going to be hard otherwise. Then again, we're in a world where Altec has 9,100, 9, but is probably not going to get that many points. So maybe it is worth yeah. gambling on Niang. Because if he does win, it's going to cost 1,100 less, but he'll get you way more than Altec. So in a weird sense, I guess there's a logic to getting him. So that's the end of day one. Day two starts off liquid NME. So which liquid players would we want salary-wise here? I'm assuming they're going to be the most expensive. I'm just looking it up. Yeah, I, I need to get there. Just give me a second. Liquid players usually are quite expensive if they are if they're like at all favored. Well, that's because Piglet and Phoenix get a lot of points. Yeah, so Piglet is the most expensive AD uh, AD carry on this day. Yep. And Phoenix is the most expensive. He's actually Basically, the most expensive the only, player, period. <laughs> I mean, the only players on Liquid who aren't the most expensive are the support and jungler. So Piglet... Which are usually who you don't want to pick. You, you'd much rather have Piglet, Phoenix, followed by Quas. But here's the key thing. So, Piglet is I, only $100 more than Double Lift. He's actually, he the same as all they're all really expensive at the moment. So it's, even though he's number one, this is one of the times where it's probably not bad to pick him. Because he is yeah. now worth and a, Altec a solid is amount of points. Altec, Piglet puts up way more points when winning than Altec does. So, And this is a lock. A cast iron lock. Enemy. Yeah, it's pretty as much. As you can get. Yeah, like gravity so, teammate yeah. also a lock, but gravity puts up garbage points. So I would definitely pick this as the the team to build around for this play day. So TDK versus Tip. Now again, Tip players are really expensive. This should be considered a lock. Yes, yes, it should be. Uh, but the players you want, who are like Rush and Apollo, are also very expensive. Although Apollo is slightly cheaper by two hundred than Piglet. You know, eh. Is there a bigger chance of TDK upsetting the enemy? I don't think so. I think it's probably about equal likelihood, frankly. Okay, so C9 versus CLG should be a Is pretty... This a lock also? I don't know. That's the thing. With CLG in their current state and the fact that they haven't been performing consistently recently, I mean... Sure, they beat TDK last week, and they, they went 2-0. They beat TDK and NME, but those were hardly tough opponents. But I don't know. They're, mm, CLG is 7-0 and against teams below them in the standing, so they at least have been consistent against the teams worse than them in terms of standing. Thing, so Monty. I'm going to use a little bit of history mixed with psychology to explain to you why it's still worth picking double lift here. So you're all wondering, like, oh, no, CLG's going to shit, isn't it? Same old thing. Like, he's losing trust in his teammates. You know, what's he going to do? That's exactly when you go all in on double lift. First of all, he's going to demand to protect the double lift. Beautiful. This is fantasy we're talking about here, guys. If they win, he's going to go ham, maybe even max out his points. If they lose, he's still going to get his kills. He's going to get his farm. He's going to let them have a fight while he's off farming. Listen, this is the ideal time to think about getting your double lift in there, you know. If you've already bought some other players, if you didn't take Piglet, if you want, if you want the flex, yeah, let's just go with double lift on this one. History and Chaucer's teachings will prove him right, okay. No coach can control him. 
we don't want a coach to control him. Turn him loose, coach. <laughs> get out that man's way. <laughs> Give him the ball. Get out of his way. So that's why I, in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to show my, I'm going to make a team. Every week, Monty, I have to make like teams that don't make sense in terms of stats, but they have a purpose to them. Okay. So I'm going to make a team this week that's based around, I'm going to make some European ones just all based around beating the teams that have social problems. I'm going to make a team here based around CLG actually winning, but on a greedy protected double if comp. So essentially, I'm going, to, I'm, going to cyn- I'm going to be like an American businessman in my suit and tie. I'm just going to cynically <laughs> use the, the horrible tragedy of the world to make money. That's what I'm going to do. That's what my teams this week are going you're to do. Truly, so, you're truly an inspiration. Yeah. So we'll have a segment at the beginning of next show called Thorin Profits from Human Suffering. And uh, <laughs> so that's, that, we'll see how much I profited, whether it was like arms deals to Sarajevo or, or what, you know. So in fact, I'll scale how successful I was based on po- past atrocities that people profited from cynically. So that's a, that'll be the scale on which I'll judge my success. So we've got teammate gravity. Now, is there any reason gra- teammate would win this? No, but again, gravity is super. Does teammate expensive. as an actual team have any redeeming qualities? Like when they've won from, from a fantasy it? perspective? No, it's like Cloud Nine used to do this too. They used to win very cleanly with low amounts of kills and not put up any fantasy points, even though they were they were dominant. They were the number one team. So no, they're not. Gravity has not shown that they are reliably good fantasy picks by any stretch of the imagination, in spite of all their wins. But in terms of players, let's see. Like, like the biggest bait here is Keen because he's very likely to win the game, but his salary is not that expensive because if you have a look how much he gets, he gets less points in wins than Doublelift gets in losses. <laughs> like, well, what do you want me to tell you? That's it's not the best, right? That's not great. Now there's one game left, Dignitas TSM. So will Dignitas upset TSM? What are the odds do you think on that for a start off? Not too terrible, but TSM should win that match. Uh, given given Dignitas's current trajectory down into the dumpster, um, I mean, they lost to Cloud9 <laughs> and Impulse last week, the week before. They lost to Liquid. They managed to beat Teammate, but... They're one in three recently, and it looks like their hot streak has been fading over time. But TSM also having their own troubles coming off an 0-2 week themselves. Uh, and they actually are one in three. The only team they've beaten is TDK. So this actually could go pretty – this is going to be a really important game, actually, for playoff seeding probably. So a player for this match, if you actually think TSM will win, that's actually not bad value is Santorin. Because if, if you're in a position where you can't get Rush, you can't get Dominate because do- Dominate's 100 more and Rush is 500 more, Santorin's not a terrible pick. He's still gonna, he gets 32 points. It's more than some carries do. So that's not yeah. that bad. He's also the second highest on TSM. It goes Bjergsen and then Santorin and then Wild Turtle. Especially when you consider that you are picking him in a world in which he gets more points than Nick Smithy, who's below him, and Move is very likely to win and is a few below him, but doesn't get points. So Move actually, he's sort of the sweet points. spot right here. In terms of these these players, he's the sweet spot in terms yep. of like some value, likely to yep. win, not super yep. expensive for a jungler, which you don't want to be a main player anyway. So that's not a that's not a bad pick, I don't think. Right, okay, that's the end of NA for this week. So let's do OGN. Slash LCK. So I actually have to call it LCK money because it's listed as LCK on Alpha Draft. But like, I can't find the OGN competition. And I'll be like, yeah, that's a lot of our problem. So LCK, which will be, let's see. Okay, so let me just check actually what the contest is first. Yeah, day one and day two. So day one and day two, KT versus Spenu. And remember, Spenu, <laughs> just to repeat, Spenu's now won another game, though, Monty, but they're now three games out of 25 played. That's how many games they've won, and they've they've won zero best of threes. And also, given KT's current form, where after they got Pickaboo, they're starting to look better, they are... I mean, KT is still just... The the top three teams in terms of points that you really want to look at 
are CJ, Koo, and KT. These guys produce way more points than anybody else on average uh, through their victories. And so someday, it's Arrow and Someday at the top of that standing for KT, pretty definitively. Um, so here's my question, Monty. On day one, we've got KT, Spenu, CJ, Najin, Koo, SKT. In theory, the other two have more wiggle room. Like, if anyone was going to beat SKT, maybe it would be Koo. They're doing so well. CJ Najin, still coin flippy. So here's my question to you. Here's where you have to give me the analysis. Is KT going to wreck Svenu so hard in just two games, maybe even cleanly, that they won't get that many points, that it's worth still picking the lock? Or would you no, gamble no, it is, it is, it is, It is worth picking it because of how many points a player like Arrow gets. When he averages 35 and a half points in a win, even in a 2-0, he could, he's projected to average like 70 points <laughs> i mean kt kt gets things done okay. and they get a lot of kills so, so every I think team's going to be based around kt for this one well i mean they're so expensive though how can you that's the problem arrow is 1600 more the than one, space the two players basically you pick the two carries and then you have to yeah gamble you pick the arrow others. you pick arrow and someday if you can so cj versus najin now, here's your problem, Monty. You think that both are overrated and crap, so which one of the ones that's overrated and crap do you favor to be even more overrated and crap? Well, the nice thing about CJ is that they, can t- they have both of the top two players for fantasy, which are Coco and Space. Uh, and Shy is in sixth place, too. So they have, like, three players in the top six. That's pretty crazy, actually. So they produce a lot of points. I think CJ should win this. Uh, just based on Najin's current form and the kind of disappointing play that they put up last week. There's a problem, they, they, though, Monty. What? You know what the problem is? Is that CJ players are the most, second most expensive. So if you go with the KT lock, how do you yeah. get CJ players? Well, this is a really tough week to pick on because... The I mean, you think SKT is going to win too. SKT is very reasonably priced, but these are two teams and Koo and SKT going up against each other with very long win streaks. That said, SKT should probably take this one, um, which makes the it, but it might go to three games, which makes actually picking SKT very good. And maybe you try and round out with a couple of Najin players, but here's the problem: if someone is going to pick, if they think CJ will win. Wouldn't they actually be better basing the team around the CJ main players over the KT ones in that respect? Yeah. Yes, because they're cheaper, but it's also much less of a sure thing. However, that said, it's also possible that CJ versus Najin, of course, goes to three games, in which case there's, you know, there's some value there because even if they lose, just like last week when CJ lost in three games, Coco was still doing well. But odds are you're picking between which one you're going to do that. Are they going to be KT or CJ? Yeah. It's going to be hard to put both in. Yeah, you definitely can't do both. Ku SKT. Obviously, as soon as you say that, you know that Ku players are going to be cheap because SKT's won every single best of three. They've lost so few individual games. And Kuro and Prey are number one and number two uh, for kills in the league as a whole, and that means they're number three and number five for fantasy points when ignoring they fantasy is ku going to win this series probably not why not because skt look pretty immaculate right now they're on a very they're on they're on a pretty high level of play at the moment and i don't think that uh ku is going to be able to dethrone them in a best of 3 i think ku could take the game a, is there any chance skt just uses some of their subs I, not for this one. Not against the number two team in the league. I don't think they would do that. Okay. In terms uh, of the, the thing actual is, salary amount, the thing is, is worth SK, getting from SKT actually isn't great when we talk about when we talk about their salary either. For this particular league, uh, sure, Faker. They're the, like SKT is the gravity of of Korea. They are the number one team, but they're not actually putting up fantasy points. All the players are in the bottom fifty percent of fantasy. So here's your because problem, they, Monty. They don't have messy games. They just go. They cleanly win there's, without there's getting no too point, many kills. There's no point telling me about SKT players here, Monty, because mathematically, there's no way you can make a team that has KT or CJ and then fill out with all SKT. There's no way it's going to be possible. So essentially, on this particular play day, if you play it, you're going to have to pick someone to upset. 
So how else are you going to make your team? Not, not upset. You're going to have to pick which either CJ versus Najin or Ku versus SKT that you think is going to go to three games. So you're going to have to okay. pick some players from a losing team that you're, you think will go to three games. Maybe you get lucky and which that one, team wins. Which one's a good one there? Najin? I think CJ versus Najin is – yeah, I think Najin is, is better. And for Najin, uh, of course, OQ, always solid. Goong actually has more points than OQ. So Goong followed by OQ for Najin, probably pretty good value. What are the chances that Ku can get it in three games? I don't know. I think SKT is going to go all, all out on them, frankly, just to make sure that they can wrap up their number one position before the playoffs. So on day two, well, day day three, actually, because the contests are obviously one and two and then three and four in, in LCK. We start out with Anarchy versus Samsung. So two teams that are bottom dwellers, both... In fact, Anarchy's won three best of threes this season. Samsung's only won four. I think Samsung still should be the, the favorite in this particular matchup just based on Anarchy's current level of performance compared to Samsung. Uh, Samsung has, generally speaking, been doing better, although they did lose a game to Spenu, so there's that aspect. And Anarchy did take a game off Najin. But Samsung, kind of, in the last few weeks, they 2 0 IM. Um, they, of course, lost a coup. That's not surprising. But I, I think their form should be a little bit better versus Anarchy. So maybe there's value here, but uh, Fury is also the second most AD, expensive AD carry. And are there any other players that are worth gambling on? I think Samsung? that when Fury is more expensive than OQ and the next match is IM versus Najin, I think I would much rather go with OQ than Fury right now, just because I think it's better value for a match that Najin is likely to win. Yeah, and the problem is not many other Samsung players really get that many points. Like their mid laner gets 26 points in wins. Right, and Fury only gets about 30, so they don't actually get that many points in wins. So I think the Najin, Najin is definitely better value. They should beat IM, and even better, IM might take it to three games because of Najin's inconsistency, but Goong and, Goong and OQ deliver in the point department. Okay, on that particular game, I am also bottom dweller. They've won three games, and also they've only won, well, three years best of three. They've only won seven actual games, though. So in theory, that, that actually should be more. Now, they changed their zero. roster. They changed their roster pretty dramatically, and they have been looking better, which means that they could potentially take a game off Najin. If Anarchy could take a game off Najin, so can I am. But I don't think they can actually win the series. And I think Najin has pretty good value, especially OQ, who's only 7,900. So here's the question then: If it's going to go to, if it can go to three games for IM, are there any IM players who might even be worth taking in a loss? Let's see. Uh, Tucson's actually been doing pretty well. Tucson is the highest player for points while winning. Uh, actually, no, he's not. Sorry, it's Ignar. Actually, is the the highest. It's Ignar and Frozen. So those okay. players, surprisingly, Ignar being way up there so far. Right. Just to point that out, since you said winning, you mean as in if they win a game, even if they lose the other two, you can get that many for the point the game you win. That's going to even right. out in that sense. Frozen, Frozen is better if Frozen loses uh, because his. if you just look at his average points per game um, as opposed to his average points when winning, uh, he is about 20 points. That includes both his wins and his losses. Um, yeah, and he actually is set only 7,000, so he's second yeah, to cheapest has, in the whole league. He has a very low standard deviation also. So if you need to round out somebody with, if you have some of the picks maybe from CJ that are causing you to be very expensive because you really want to put, you really want to go for Coco in space, maybe you can slip Frozen into like a flex slot and he's cheap and he's sort of reliable when he loses if you want to think that Coco is going to go big, but again, Coco in space, top two players in terms of points while winning, so they definitely put up the numbers and they will definitely beat Spenu. 
So the lock for you is you're definitely going to have your team's best throw on Coco in space for this this play down. I actually don't know if I will because they're so expensive. I mean, Coco's ten thousand. That's a huge chunk of change, and space is ninety six hundred. I think you can maybe take one. Okay. So here's the here's where you're going to get baited. Are you ready, Monty? The last series is KT Jader. So who's going to win that one? I think KT will. Okay. Well, if they will, Monty, go look how cheap some of the KT players are. I know. Arrow is 7,400. He's cheaper than you know, Ch- you know what? Jack. You know what Alpha Draft's telling you, Monty? Alpha Draft's telling you that KT aren't going to win this one. <laughs> Who is right? Monty or Alpha Draft? Let's see. Well, technically, love- Alpha, Monty, technically, Alpha Draft's always right because they pay Monty for his analysis <laughs> expertise. They put this show on. So in many ways, they're always right. That's right. <laughs> Keep paying. Very good. So, <laughs> but no, here's the thing. Nagne Edge, 7,000. Same as Frozen. I mean, someday is even the fourth cheapest top laner for the first time in a really long time. He's only 100 more than Trace, but Arrow, someday. Now, if you want to go for Jin Air, Captain Jack and GBM, both are very reliable picks. If you want to go for KT, you want Arrow, you want someday. These are like the big priorities. But yeah, Pickaboo might be worth getting too, just considering how well he's been doing. Pickaboo actually isn't in here. It still says Fixer and Sage. Interesting. <laughs> But yes, the support player for KT. Probably going to be good for that so, too. So here's the thing that's a problem with this last game though, Monty, is that actually Jin Air haven't had that many 2 to 1s in recent form. A lot of them, they either lose 2 0 or win 2 0. So is this likely to be a three game series? I think that KT could win it 2 0. So I would think this would be a three game series, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will be. The, their last match against Najin was a three game series. Because in that Jin sense, Air. you could. Well, they, they also, got bodied by SK Telecom. You could also get bait. Yeah, that's the only one that was the best of threes, by the way. But you could, the only, uh, well, full three game series. The only problem yep. here then is that in that scenario, if they're going to win 2-0, you don't want to get baited into the logic of like, well, KT, even in, if they win one game, they'll get all so many points. Smith. That's, that might not happen, actually. You have to think that KT is going to win to want to pick them, I think, here. Yeah, well, yeah, they, uh, yeah, I suppose that's true. I think they will. I just think they will, just from watching Jin Air recently and watching their losses to SKT and um, and uh, CJ, and then seeing how they performed against against uh, Najin, and we compare that to KT's recent performance against Najin, which was extremely decisive. That KT should be the better team coming in. Okay, that's the end of this week's episode. So, if you're gonna play fantasy sports such as League of Legends then you might want to do it on Alpha Draft. You should definitely do it by the numbers.